Okay, we're back on the Zenith Cobramatic radio phono combo. And if you recall in the last video, the radio was abruptly cutting in and out. So, I think the best thing to do is, in a case like this, is make voltage measurements. And I've already made a voltage measurement on the 12BE6 mixer tube. And on the screen grid, it wants to, we want to see 104 volts. But let me demonstrate what's actually happening here. We're only getting about 52 volts, and it's fluctuating. And when it really gets bad, it jumps down to about 18 volts, but right now it's wanting to somewhat behave. Well, to make a long story short, I trace the voltage, the voltage line to the screen grid of the tube back through this resistor here and the red lead comes back around and goes back to this resistor right here. You can't see it but that resistor is kind of swollen up and you can see it sparking from time to time. So the resistor is obviously cracked. Let me try one more time to see if I can make it act up for you. Yeah, you saw that little spark. Well, naturally, it's going to behave on camera now. Okay, now it's dropped off to nothing. You can see it sparking there try to take a voltage measurement while it's misbehaving here. See now our voltage has dropped down to like 12 volts. Okay, so it looks like that's our problem. Okay, and here's the resistor, an old old style carbon composition resistor. It just crumbled apart on me as I was cutting it out of the circuit. And here's the resistor right here on the schematic, 220 ohm between the uh, two filter capacitors. So let's try to find a 220 ohm resistor. Okay, it looks like that took care of the problem. Uh, we want to see 104 volts on the screen grid of the mixer tube. We're only seeing about 79 volts, so we're still a little bit low. Uh, right now, I want to check the output of this selenium rectifier. Okay, I'm now checking the plate voltage on the first 12AV6 tube, which is the driver stage. The second tube is the phase inverter. I want to see 75 volts on pin 7, but I'm only reading... I'm reading about 57 volts, so almost 20 volts lower than we should be, so we want to look into that. And now I'm checking the plate of the 12BA6IF amplifier. Schematic calls for 104 volts. We only have 88. And you can see the radio doesn't like that uh, socket extender there in its place. Or should I say, as you can hear, the radio doesn't like that socket extender there. And the voltage is on the 12BE6 mixer tube are also off. We want to see around 104 here. As you can see, only around 88, 89 volts. Okay, I've checked the resistors that lead up to the plate of the 12AV6 to see if any of those have drifted up causing the low voltage condition and none of them have they're all good and tracing everything back it leads right back to the power supply and the output of the selenium rectifier which is low
a little bit low, not too bad low, but possibly enough enough to be causing our low voltage problem. Now selenium rectifiers have their advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage being that when they short out they emit a very foul odor, something similar to rotten eggs. One of the advantages is due to their higher internal resistance they'll come near taking a power surge and not blowing up whereas a modern silicon diode that has very little resistance is very easily damaged by a power surge or what have you and the reason I know that is 25 years of repairing televisions and other consumer electronics that have been struck by lightning or a or a power surge and it would pop one or more of the diodes in the power supply and one of the failure modes of a selenium rectifier as it ages its internal resistance increases and therefore the output voltage is lower and over time it just keeps getting lower and lower and lower until the the rectifier just fails completely now we can replace one of these with a modern 1 in 4007 silicon diode however it's not quite as simple as that since the selenium rectifier has a higher internal resistance that means it drops more voltage across it where a silicon diode drops approximately 0.7 volts so if you were to use a silicon diode in place of a selenium with as is, your B plus voltage would be significantly higher than normal. And the way we get around that is we, we place a resistor at the input of the uh, silicon diode to cut the voltage down. And whenever I remove this silica, selenium rectifier, I suppose I'll just check the filter capacitors and just see what kind of condition they're in. I'd like to leave them alone, but you know, if they check questionable, even though there is no hum, I might just go ahead and replace them. Okay, checking the electrolytic capacitor on the uh, modern digital meter, the the uh, capacitance value reads pretty close to what it's supposed to be. So now we're taking it a step further and checking it with the old ICO capacitance bridge. And Looks like we have pretty high a pretty high power factor rating here, which is ESR in today's terms. Look how high that knob is turned up. I'll switch it over and check for leakage. And we're only applying about a hundred volts. You can see the eye is staying closed for a very long time there. And our 60 microfarad section has the same issue with the uh, high power factor. Let's test this section for leakage. Well, it, that eye is opening up pretty quick on that capacitor, so it's not as bad and leaky as uh, the first section was. Here's a modern 100 microfarad cap connected. We'll run the leakage test on this one. Remember before how the eye closed and stayed closed. Now watch it now. See it's opening, opening up fairly quickly. I'm increasing the working voltage and you can see the eye opens up quickly before it was staying closed a very long time on the original capacitor. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and replace these electrolytics now. Now that I've proven that the old ones are, are indeed on their way out. Okay, I have the filter capacitors replaced. And I'll admit this is a little bit hacky the way I did it, but got the job done. I removed the old capacitor and I decided just to cut the top of it off and uh, install the two new capacitors on the uh, 
remaining bottom part of the original capacitor and due to the rat bed nature of this chassis it wasn't very easy getting it all back in and resoldering everything but it's back in there and working I used 200 volt capacitors just for a little margin of safety and then I put everything back together and BAM it didn't work had no audio and then I discovered dummy me I'd reversed one of the 35 C5's and the uh, 12 AV6 output tubes in their sockets so yeah we all make mistakes and that's factory and I don't know where that background hiss is coming from I was getting that on another radio that I was testing yesterday four games using ear protection when attending sports events And the new filter capacitors cause the uh, B plus voltage off of the selenium rectifier to come up a little bit, but we're still a little bit low, so I think we'll now go ahead and replace this selenium rectifier with a silicon diode and a resistor. I know the thing works like it is, but I always like to keep things in spec and try to fix them so they'll last a reasonable amount of time. Okay, I replaced the uh, selenium rectifier with a 1N4007 diode and a 15 ohm resistor. Now our voltage is running around 132, 33 volts. And our performance is much better. And I found out where the hissing was coming from, interference from the DTV converter box. Okay, here's what we did. Have our AC coming in here to one side of the 15 ohm resistor, which is actually two 30 ohm one half watt resistors in parallel. Other side of the resistor goes to the anode of the 1N4007 diode. The cathode end of the diode, which is denoted by the band, connects to this other resistor, which is part of the original design. So now you know how to convert a selenium rectifier equipped set over to one that uses a silicon diode. You'll have to experiment with various resistor values, which generally can range anywhere from 10 ohms up to 100 ohms, depending on the circuit. Okay, here we are back together again. Base. And we'll try a record. Okay, there you go, the 1957 or 58 Zenith Cobramatic record player. Thanks for watching and more to come later.